Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to learn one of the fundamental principles of classical mechanics, Newton's second law of motion and the concept of momentum. So, let's get started. Now, before we enter into the second law, let's quickly recap what we've learned about the first law of motion. The first law states that an object will remain at rest or in uniform motion in a straight line unless acted upon by an external force. The second law, on the other hand, is concerned with what happens when there is an external force acting on an object. It relates this force to the object's acceleration. Simply, it tells us how force and acceleration are connected. To understand the second law better, we need to introduce a new concept, momentum. Momentum is defined as the product of an object's mass, m, and its velocity, v, and is denoted by the symbol p. Mathematically, it can be expressed as p equals to mv. Now, why is momentum important? Well, let's consider some everyday examples. 1. Imagine pushing a small car and a loaded truck on a flat road. You'll need a much greater force to accelerate the truck to the same speed as the car in the same amount of time. 2. If you drop two stones from a building, one light and one heavy, you'll find it easier to catch the lighter stone. The mass of an object affects the force required to change its motion. 3. Speed also matters. A bullet fired at high speed can be deadly, while the same bullet fired at a lower speed may not cause much harm. But it's not just mass and velocity that affect motion. It's also the force applied and how quickly it's applied. A cricketer catching a fast-moving cricket ball can do so more easily because he allows more time for the ball to decelerate. The rate of change of momentum matters. If the change in momentum happens rapidly, a greater force is needed. So the greater the rate of change of momentum, the greater the force required. Now, let's formally state Newton's second law of motion. The rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the applied force and takes place in the direction in which the force acts. We can express this law mathematically as F proportional to dp dt. Where F is the force, dp dt is the rate of change of momentum with respect to time. Again, dp dd equals to dmv dt equals to m dv dt because m remains constant with time. Therefore, dp dt equals to ma, where a equals to dv dt acceleration of the body. This implies that F proportional to ma equals to kma, where k is the proportional constant. Now, if we define unit of force in such a way that one unit of force causes one unit mass to accelerate by one unit acceleration, then value of k becomes 1. That is, if f equals to 1, when m equals to 1 and a equals to 1, then k equals to 1. For an object with a fixed mass m, we can rewrite this as f equals to ma. Now, you might wonder about the unit of force. We define it in terms of Newton's second law. 1 Newton, n, is the force that causes a mass of 1 kilogram to accelerate by 1 meter per second square. So 1n equals to 1 kgm per s squared. Remember, 1. If the force is 0, that is f equals to 0, then acceleration is 0, that is a equals to 0, which is consistent with the first law. 2. Internal forces within a system are not considered in the second law. We only focus on external forces. Lastly, we'll touch on impulsive forces. These are large forces acting for very short durations, causing finite changes in momentum. The product of force and time is known as impulse. Impulse equals to force multiplied by time duration equals to change in momentum. And that's a wrap on Newton's second law of motion and the concept of momentum. I hope you've gained the basic understanding of how force and acceleration are connected through this fundamental law of physics. As always, keep exploring, keep learning, and I'll see you in the next video.